so there's this molecule uh, with the formula C4H8NO. And it says can represent a number of compounds which have different functional groups and which show different types of isomerism. Uh, compound H, J, and K have the molecule formula C4H8NO. So there's one O. Uh, one O means, uh, it means it could be an alcohol. I mean, there's only one oxygen, right? Or it could be an aldehyde or, uh, or a carboxylic or, or a ketone. But it can't, it can't be a carboxylic acid. The uh, reason it can't be a carboxylic acid is because carboxylic acid needs two oxygens. Then it goes on to say that uh, the carbon chain is unbranched and the molecule is not cyclic. Now, what does unbranched and not cyclic mean? Unbranched means that the four carbon atoms are going to be in a straight line. No branching. And it won't be cyclic. I mean, they are not be connected uh, in a cyclic manner. And then it says that no oxygen atom is attached to any carbon atom that is involved in pi bonding, which means that the oxygen atom and your double bonds, they should not be close to each other. So it should not be close to a double bond. So a carboxylic acid, an ox, uh, so what he's saying is that the oxygen atom should not be uh, attached to any carbon atom that's, that's involved in pi bonding. Pi bonds are in double bonds. And then it says that H reacts with sodium metal, a colorless flammable gas is produced. So it's reacting with sodium metal. Now let me quickly check whether we, we did this or not. Uh, if you go back and have a look at uh, the reactions that you studied, uh, here's sodium metal, but that's a reaction of, of carboxylic acid. So we already stated that it can't be a carboxylic acid because carboxylic acids have two oxygen atoms. Uh, one reaction, which I think we did miss when we were talking about alcohols, uh, we did esters. No, we did this as well. And is this your version? Yes. So we did this as well. The alcohols are really weak acids. And I told you that they had a weaker ionization compared to water as well. And I told you that uh, the reason why it was a terribly weak acid, because the OH would ionize, the oxygen negative minus one charge over here had high negative charge. Why, why did it have a high negative charge? Because the carbon chain had an electron rotating effect, which made the negative charge really uh, intense and that would attract the H plus one and wouldn't let the H plus one go back, go away. So there would be very less dissociation, but alcohols almost have no acidic behavior except for one, which is, which is that they react with sodium. I mean, that's, that's the only acidic thing that they do. They react with sodium metal. And when they react with sodium metal, they're going to produce hydrogen gas. So that means if you go back and have a look at the question, since it is reacting with sodium metal and it is producing an acidic, uh, a flammable gas, H must be an alcohol. So this H over here, it has to be an alcohol. Right, is this clear, Bhaskar, Ibrar, Abba? Yes, sir. Yes. As it must be an alcohol. So let's look at H first, because uh, I said, there's, is there any other information given about H? I said, there's no other information, and he's saying that uh, the three formulas that, that are H. So I know that it's an alcohol, and all four carbon atoms should be in a line. They, they mentioned that, right? Uh, so let's make it an alcohol. So it's going to have OH, and it's going to have all these hydrogens.
so that's a that's a primary alcohol. I'm making a primary alcohol. And they had said that the formula was C4H8. And there was one O. Now, what does that mean? It means uh, that we got the formula wrong. Because if you count the number of hydrogen atoms, they are 10. How can I reduce the number of hydrogen atoms to by two? What should I do? By giving it a double bond. You can just remember that by adding double bonds, you can actually decrease the amount of hydrogen atoms in a molecule by exactly two. So you can remember this one double bond would get rid of two hydrogen atoms. So that is one. I said, now they had specifically stated in this, uh, in this thing over here that no oxygen atom should be attached to any carbon atom which is involved in pi bonding. So that means the oxygen and the double bond, they should be separate from each other. So uh, we should be drawing them as far away from each other as possible. So this double bond, and here's your OH group. They should be like really far away from each other. So what's, what's another version? What's another possibility? The other possibility is that you get a four carbon atoms and the double bond this time is on the last one and the OH is over here. Again, we're meeting the criteria, which is that the double bond and the OH must be as far away from each other as possible. So that's another molecule. And then a third one, that the double bond is at the end and the OH could be on this carbon atom. Still, they're far away from each other. So these are the only three alcohols that are possible under the circumstances. That it should be a straight chain, all four carbon atoms in a line. And the double bond and the OH groups, they need to be away from each other. Uh, they should not be on the same carbon atom. Okay? Rita, is this clear? Abba, is this clear? Yes, sir. So can't we do a, a trans version of this? They, right now, no, they, they're asking for structural formulas. Okay, when, mm -hmm. you, when he's asking for structural uh, formulas, no, when you're asking for mm -hmm. structural formulas, uh, structural formula, the structure has to be different. Okay? I mean, he must have Not said, yeah. uh, I mean, seeing the three structural formulas are possible. I said, remember that cis and trans have the same structural formula. Unka three dimensional formula different author. Is this clear? No, sir. Nee, be... For example, uh, which one do you think is uh, is going to show uh, stereoisomers or form stereoisomers? The first one. I said the first the one. The first is... one, the second one, and the second one. Second one. Nee, the second one. Nee, uh, the first one. The second, the first one can show us. The first one, no. I said both cis and trans are going mm -hmm, to have, exactly. are going to have the same structural formula. Because structural formula, Joanna, it's it's not the three dimensional formula. Structural formulas only tell you okay, which atom is bonded to which atom, right? So the structural formula is the same. Cis trans ki jab baat karte na, cis trans is okay, around the double bond. This is the shape of the molecule. It's trigonal planar. And over here on this side, if you look at this carbon atom, it's bonded to H and CH3. So it's bonded to an H. And on one side, there is a CH3. I said the other one, that is also bonded to an H. And on the other side, there is CH2 and an OH. This is your cis version, right? So that's one. What would be your trans version? In the trans version, again, the double bond is going to be fan shaped, trigonal planar. So it's going to be trigonal planar. And this side would be the same. Okay, there would be H's, CH3. This side would be the bond would, that was pointing downwards would be pointing upwards. And there's an H here. So that's your that's your transversion. Now remember, uh, you can't show cis and trans by just looking at the structural formula. They have they both have the same structural formula. They have the same connectivity. Except when you draw the three-dimensional formula, the three-dimensional formula looks different. 
ابراز از اسلام مطلب بیسیکلی سٹرکچر فارمولا مطلب بوت سسٹمز ار دی سیم مولیکیولز بٹ دیر ڈائمنشنز ار ڈیفرنٹ آئی مین دی نوٹ دی سیم مولیکیولز دیر اوبویسلی ڈیفرنٹ مولیکیولز آئی ایم جسٹ سینگ کہ دیر ٹو ٹائپس اف آئسومرزم ون از دی سٹرکچرل آئسومرز رائٹ اینڈ دی ادر ون از از دی از دی سٹیو آئسومرز ٹھیک ہے سو ہی ہیڈ ٹھیک ہے he wasn't looking for the three dimensional formulas he was he was asking that there were three possible three structural formulas in dono ka agar structural formula draw karoge it's going to look exactly the same so he was saying that when you when you talk about structural formulas the structure has to be different the connectivity has to be different although the connectivity is different in stereo isomers ah got it theek hai acha there is there is actually got it There's actually another one which is forming stereo isomers uh, out of the three. Which one? Which one out of the three? The out of the I mean these two. Which one is forming stereo isomers? Because they, mm, they ask. The, the, I mean they're asking. Uh, they're going to ask you in the next. I mean this one is a chiral carbon atom. Okay, it's a okay. it's a chiral carbon atom, and in the ne- on the next page they're actually asking for. you to draw the uh, chiral molecule so around the chiral carbon atom uh, carbon is tetrahedral right and there is an oh a ch3 and over here there is an h and on the other side there is a h and a double bond and two right and the other version of the molecule is going to be that it's going to be reflected it's uh, the oh would still be on the top uh, the dotted line would be pointing here it's going to be ch3 uh, there's going to be an h and there's going to be the c double bond c and h and two h's okay so that's those are your two optical lines uh sir is it necessary or important for the chiral matlab for the oh to be on the upper side matlab can we actually write the oh as a dotted line or matlab ch3 uh, as the hedged line uh, matlab, that's, any... that's i mean okay. all four they could be expressed i mean okay. that's that's it element i mean you can you can obviously rotate a molecule okay, so okay doesn't matter for us because it means that o h is there you want to say it's it's just that all four sides i mean you can switch the h and o h position you can switch the uh, ch3 so it doesn't really matter just remember that there's going to be two bonds that would be in the same plane one bond coming towards you and one dotted going into the board hmm, got it okay i said so so we've we've drawn uh you've drawn the three structural formulas of h and we've drawn their uh, stereo isomers as well like this so in total you basically have uh, i mean this one has two versions this one also has two versions in total you have five isomers for h but he was only looking for structural isomers or the structural formulas uh, not the three dimensional uh, variants of these molecules Let's anyways let's let's look at let's look at j and k now so 2 for dnph what does 2 for dnph do let's go back and let's have a look at uh, 2 for dnph when did we do this carbonyl compounds aldehydes nucleophilic addition yes this one so this on your screen it's a test for identification of carbonyl of carbonyl compounds and you get an orange precipitate whenever you have an aldehyde or a ketone this molecule is going to react and i also told you that it's not important this equation is not important because i have only seen it once uh what's more important is you just need to know that 2,4 dnph identifies aldehydes and ketones and forms an orange precipitate 
so that that means uh, that means ke j and k they basically either aldehydes or ketones right i mean that that, that is what is meant by uh, j and k where they are aldehydes or ketones and then he says that k reacts with fillings only k reacts with fillings so how do you differentiate between an aldehyde and a ketone you talked about oxidation of aldehydes and ketones which was uh, where did we study oxidation i mean somewhere we did study yeah this one i think this is a reduction i said we talked about aldehydes getting oxidized we talked about primary alcohols getting oxidized to aldehydes which were further oxidized to carboxylic acids so your aldehydes are capable of oxidation they can undergo oxidation but your tertiary uh, not your your ketones they are not capable of oxidation they are resistant to oxidation so what do aldehydes get oxidized with they get oxidized by felling they get oxidized by tolens they get oxidized by kmno4 k2cr2o7 so all these reagents so felling is going to react with an aldehyde so if we go back uh, there was felling reacting with k so k is an aldehyde so remember k would be an aldehyde and i'm going to do this over here i'm actually running out of space let's do it on the next page so the question is k is an aldehyde and that leaves us with j which is going to be a ketone he gets this clear as well Bhagat, yes sir okay so uh, k must be an aldehyde and j both of them must be carbonyl compounds now c4 h8 and o so that means all four carbon atoms would be in a line and aldehyde the double bond o would be right at the end this will have two hydrogens this will have uh, two hydrogens as well and this one will have three hydrogens and this other one should be a ketone so it's going to be double bond o this will have three hydrogens this will have uh, two hydrogens and this one will have sir why are ketones resistant to oxidation uh, the reason is that the carbon carbon bond is very very stable like if you if you look at uh, at a primary alcohol or if you look at an aldehyde right take if you have an aldehyde this h could be broken and an oh could come i mean the hydrogens can be replaced uh because there's room for further oxidation oh yeah i get it get but i said but if you have a ketone the problem is ke uh you would have to this carbon over here is bonded to carbon atoms and the carbon carbon bond is kind of very stable yeah so, both sides have carbon chains that's why ha huh, because you would have to break a carbon chain to add anything else I get it. Okay. Remember, in all yeah. the all the organic chemistry reactions, apart from cracking, most reactions the carbon chain is remaining unaffected. Like the carbon chain is very stable; it doesn't really break. Apart from cracking. I said so. This is this is the whole question. Uh, let's do another one. Uh, let's talk about this one. So there's this compound with the molecular formula C4H8 and O2. Now, now this one it's C4H8 and O2, and it's producing a colorless flammable gas with sodium metal. Why? What does the result tell you about the functional groups that could be present? Now, it could be a carboxylic acid, or it could be an alcohol. because both of them they react and they produce h2 gas theek okay, hai we just did this a uh, carboxylic acids they also react with sodium uh, we did this carboxylic acid they also react with sodium and alcohols are weak acids uh, or very bad acids but they also react with sodium so that's one 
अच्छे कुड भी कुड इट बी एल्डिहाइड नहीं एल्डिहाइड का तो कोई रिएक्शन नहीं है विद सोडियम मेटल लाइक वी डिड नॉट आई मीन वी जस्ट स्टडीड के वी स्टडीड टू थिंग्स अबाउट अल्कोहल्स कहां पे गया पता नहीं कहां गया we studied that alcohols are very weak acids that's one that's the only acid compound we studied and we studied about carboxylic acids pata nahi kya ye end mein ke carboxylic acids react with sodium and they also form hydrogen gas right acha but the next part is the next part is ke there is no reaction when they, i mean so with carbonates there is no reaction what does that indicate What does that indicate? Okay, carboxylic acids. Carboxylic acid to carbonate with other react. I mean, it does react with carbonates. It does undergo a reaction with carbonates, right? Uh, alcohols don't. Alcohols were very bad acids. So alcohols only had just one reaction, and that was with sodium. So, so the conclusion is. that it's still an alcohol because it's not reacting with carbonates but it can't be a carboxylic acid is this clear abha rida is this clear yes i said it it uh, yes. uh, sir i was confused ki when did we study ki matlab aldehydes cannot react with sodium metal and uh, carboxylic acid cannot react with sodium hydrogen carbonate nahi carboxylic acids can react na wo to bhi kiya tha nahi oh sorry oh cannot react with sodium carbonate nahi jo humne nahi study kiya na wo nahi hota na exist nahi karta na matlab aldehydes ka bhi we never studied them as acids acha to something that we don't study means ke wo hote hi hai ya ha matlab wo obviously uska matlab yahi hai na ke उस तो फिर हमें हर रिएक्शन पढ़ना पड़ जाएगा के तो रिमेम्बर एल्डिहाइड्स एंड कीटोन्स आर हैव नथिंग टू डू विद एसिड्स एंड बेसिस दे 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 नॉट एसिडिक ठीक है अ मैं वैसे एक आईडिया देता हूं ये जो ओएच वाली चीजें होती है ना दीस आर द वंस दैट आर बेसिकली एसिड्स दे आर कैपेबल ऑफ लूजिंग H+ आयंस ठीक है एनीथिंग दैट यूजुअली हैज ओएच व्हेदर इट्स अल्कोहल और कार्बोक्सिलिक एसिड मतलब आपके जितने भी ये इवन नॉर्मल एसिड्स होते हैं ना दे हैव दीस ओएच ग्रुप्स फॉर एग्जांपल SO4- अह H2SO4 जो होता है दैट हैज आई थिंक टू ओएच ग्रुप्स हां HCPO4 दैट्स आल्सो दैट हैज थ्री ओएच ग्रुप्स so most of the time uh you do oh groups hote na these are the ones that are actually taking part i mean they're the ones that have the capability of losing h plus one ions so it's it's only alcohols and carboxylic acids carboxylic acids were full acids and they can react with all the acids reactions that we have studied in o levels as well they can react with metals they can react with bases they can react with carbonates and also with ammonia so they can react with any they can act as acids not alcohols theek hai so in this question they had said that it wasn't reactive with carbonates so it can't be a carboxylic acid kyunki wo to karega react so it has to be an alcohol theek hai acha fir agla part hai ki it's shaken with aqueous bromine the color disappears what is this so bromination reaction what does this tell you alkene so that means it's unsaturated that that means it's alkene it has a double bond right Okay, so that's this. A uh, base on this, he's saying the carbon chain is unbranched and the molecule is not cyclic. So that means uh, the four carbon atoms are in a four ether. No? I think it was C four H eight and O two, right? So you had these four carbon atoms, right? Uh, let me just quickly check. I said, "What information did you get? It's an alcohol and it's an alkene. I mean, that's." That's the two important points: alcohol and alkene, right? 
I said, no oxygen atom is attached to a carbon atom which is involved in pi bonding. So the oxygen and the double bonds, they have to be kept separate. Then no carbon atom has more than one oxygen atom. So you have to be careful with these three points. And he's saying there are five possible isomers of X, the C4, H8, and O2. So five possible isomers of X, which fit these data, four of these isomers exist as two pairs of stereo isomers. So four of these, they exist as two pairs. So let's try and figure out all of them, right? Like C4, H8, and O2. I know it's an alcohol, right? So let's turn it into an alcohol. And I know that it has a double bond as well, right? Add a double bond. It's actually the almost the same question, except that there are two OH groups now. I said, can anyone check whether this is C4H8 and O2? C4, H8, and O2. Okay, so, so the only difference is there are two OH groups. Is this meeting all this criteria that the carbon chain is uncyclic and the OH and the double bonds are separate? So that's one. What else could you do? Uh, you could have, where could you have the double bond? The double bond could be over here. And one OH group could be over here. And the other OH group could be at this point. The double bonds and the OH have to be away from each other. And he had explicitly stated that, uh, he had explicitly stated that uh, the OH groups, the oxygens must be, that no carbon atom has more than one oxygen atom. So these are the only two possibilities that you have. Uh, and he's saying that two of them, they exist as a pair of stereoisomers. So the, will this form stereoisomers, this molecule over here? Banana, can you banana? Anyone? Yes, why not banana? No, no, the first one won't. Why won't it? Me? See, it's, it has uh -huh. a double bond. Achha, <laughs> and, and you're being asked to draw the display. I said, remember, focus on the word display. Display means you have to draw every single bond. Like, this is how you're going to draw the display formula of the first pair. This is going to be double bond. Show every bond. I mean, there's C, H, even the OH bond has to be shown. And over here, there's an H. So I'm drawing the cis version. And then there's CH2. H2 and O and then H. So that's that's the first one. And then you draw the trans version, which is H. I mean, I need to switch their positions. So it's going to be just a little lower. So it's going to be uh, the CH2OH would be pointing upwards. Show every bond displayed formula. And over here, it's going to look the same. Uh, that's, those are the two molecules that you're going to draw. I said, what about this one? Is it forming any uh, type of stereoisomer? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, chiral. This one is going to be chiral. And you would have to draw the displayed formula of this. I mean, there's going to be, a, there's going to be a carbon atom. And you would have to show, let's put an H over there. The OH is on top. Over here, there is a C, H, 2, and O and H. And over here, you have C, H, double bond. Then draw a mirrored version of this. It should be exactly mirrored, left to right. So state which type of isomerism. So that the first one had a, a geometric. Remember the word is geometric for cis trans. And the second one was optical. So the two types of isomerisms that exist are going to be this one. Uh, now, one thing he left out was he did not mention the fifth isomer. 
Like we drew four of them. Uh, even I don't know what the fifth isomer is. Like I, I mean, just it's just a challenge question. Uh, he did not ask for the fifth isomer. But based on this information, can you think of a fifth isomer? Like the four carbon atoms should be in a line. And uh, the carbon chain is unbranched. So what could be, and the oxygens should not be on the same uh, carbon atom. And no oxygen atom should be bonded to a carbon atom which is involved in pi bonding. Okay, so there was a fifth molecule as well, which he wasn't asking for. So I'm not actually sure about the fifth molecule. The question has ended. Uh, so let's continue with this. I've sent the worksheet as well. Try and go through the questions and try and revise the, try and revise all of this. You can make sure, the, the more, the, I mean, just practice it a lot. And get a printout of this thing. I think I'm going to try and send this. So I'm going to try and send the chart. Make your own chart. One second. So I'll, I'll send the I'll send the chart which had all those things in it. Okay. Hello, Kishan. Thank you, Lafayette. Okay, take care. Love you. Hello.